Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, is pretty smart, right? Very smart. Okay, she decided last week she had to make a compromise. To get that House bill passed through the House this time, mm -hmm. she basically allowed that language in there that said you can't participate in the exchanges, you can't get a subsidy if, there, if the insurance policy includes abortion coverage, right? She made that call. She made that call. Okay, and you call. wouldn't have made that call. Well, you know, I think uh, I've been in politics a long time, and you count every vote. vote. And she had to make the call for the, making sure that that bill passed. I don't like that the Stupak language was in that, but the fight isn't over. And I think that's the point. You have to keep going. It's a big process. This is the beginning. We're going to go to the Senate now. The fight continues. You're being so reasonable. <laughs> no, I didn't count on that because I thought you'd be pure today. I thought you would say the most important issue for Democrats is choice, being from neighborhood pro-choice America, the fact that your group is founded on that idea that believes in it fundamentally Absolutely. as a fundamental right. How can you compromise Listen, that? we did You know what I'm doing here? I'm yeah, making up got, a fight here. Yeah, we I'm trying to get you to say what you really believe, which is if this bill comes for final passage and you're talking to your members, you're saying to them, or your Congress people mm -hmm. who are loyal to you, you're saying don't vote for that amendment again. You're exactly right. Let me tell you that there was a compromise in the original bill that basically said there is no federal funding for abortion in the original bill. The Stupak Amendment went much, much further than that. It basically eliminated the status quo. So there, you know, you're counting votes late at night. Fact of the matter is now we've got to remove that language. That's my bottom line. The Stupak language cannot oh, be Oh, in. okay, here we go. You're arguing the fog of war late at night what's the implication that they didn't really know what they were doing I think that there were members of Congress that felt that they were not given the Nancy entire... Pelosi didn't know what she was doing no Nancy Pelosi knew what she was doing okay. and she understood the Peter Barnett, back to you sir uh, it seems to me that the question is in the end they're gonna have to decide on some kind of compromise you may not like the compromise somebody else may like it somebody else may not like it but in the end if they're gonna get a health care bill what what kind of compromises no public option some vague kind of trigger uh, abortion rights restricted in some way, maybe not with regard to the exchanges, but certainly with regard to the subsidies, things like that. Your thoughts? Yeah, you're not even mentioning some of the really ugly stuff on illegal immigrants not being able to access health care that they're having to swallow. I mean, this is my point. This is ugly, but I think it's a sign of the Democratic Party's realism. Look, I hope you guys win. I really do. I hope you get rid of Stupak. I hope we keep the status quo. I'd love to get rid of the high number. You're turning this into but an I eat think, your spinach thing for Democrats. My, but but right? think, think about the consequences of winning, though, Chris. This is something Democrats have been go progressive been wanting for a hundred years. This is so big that it's worth swallowing the tough stuff that, like FDR and Franklin Roosevelt. Okay, here's there. the question. What's the Democratic Party stand for? Because you argue the Democratic Party stands for economic opportunity for people in this country. In fact, some kind of equalization at the bottom so the people at the bottom don't get tread down. Some kind of, you know, mixed, mixed uh, capitalism. First. Right? First. Social democracy. Yes. The other That's stuff the main goal of the party. You would argue the main goal is rights for women, right? Well, yes, absolutely. And I think... Well, you would say that's, that's a more two... important goal than economic opportunity or health care. I think that you, that you don't have to have, give up one you for don't. the other. You don't have you to give up one, one for the other. Because you say you have to choose. To some degree, I think you do. I don't think you do. Sadly. But isn't politics trade-offs? At some times. But I believe that at, at, when we know that there are pro-choice elected officials across this country that can win, they can do the economic okay, justice Okay, are you willing to compromise on this? Are you sticking to your guns? I'm sticking to my guns on well, this. Well, then why should the other side compromise? Why the should, the, why should, the, why should the, the pro-life compromise? Chris, Here's, this is a Chris, classic case Chris. of politics. You say you're going to be pure on this. You're not going to give in on this issue of the Stupak Amendment. But you expect the pro-life people on the other side to buckle and go along with the party. Let's be clear here. The okay. CAPS Amendment. The CAPS compromise was the compromise. We came to the Lowe's table CAPS and said... CAPS pro-choice. She's that's not a right. compromise. But the point was that they wanted to make sure that there were no federal dollars for abortion coverage. The CAPS compromise said no federal dollars will pay for abortion in but this country. But for the subsidies. No, well, that's a whole other issue in the exchange. But right now... <laughs> no, the, the subsidies are in there. And the, the president the other day said no subsidies Chris, for abortion. Chris, and that's the truth. Because you can have a subsidy that would not pay for the abortion co coverage, the private money would. So the point here is the compromise was the CAPS compromise. And, and the other side went further. They said we wanted more than that. And they kept moving the goal line. They kept moving the goal I, line. I think the larger question is, and I say this is someone who's pro-choice, are pro-choice people winning the argument out there in the country. On gay rights, you can see that it's moving in the progressive direction. Slowly, not as fast as it's like. On, abor on, on abortion, the public opinion is not moving in the pro-choice direction. Why not? Anything, I don't know what the answer is. That Maybe it's because people take it for granted. They, haven't, they don't remember a world where abortion was. Maybe it's because of the technology. You can see the ultrasounds. For whatever reason, that's the larger problem. So what's your point with regard to Nancy Kennedy? Is if you want a Democratic Party that can pass social safety net and be pro-choice, you have to do better in winning the public argument than I think progressives have done.
I think we've won the argument. I think most people are pro-choice. I believe that that they they know very clearly that they don't want politicians in this decision. They believe it is best made with a well, woman, her doctor. It? Chris, we're not subsidizing. Those monies are subsidizing health care, but the private okay, money. So let's now, go into the exchange. Let me point out this. There are people in this country who are totally pro-choice like yourself. There are people who are pro-life who say, no way, Jose. Then there are people in the middle who say, okay, it's really one person's decision in the end. After all the counseling and deliberative consent and all that stuff, in the end, somebody has to make up their mind. I say it's the individual, not the government. Okay. But that person can also say, I want this decision to be totally neutral. I don't want the government to spend a nickel in subsidizing it. Not a nickel. Mm -hmm. And those those people are people like Vice President Joe Biden, mm -hmm. okay? They're not weird people, mm -hmm. okay? That's what I'm saying. That's right. And Chris, let's go to the Catholic bishops for a minute and Catholic hospitals. Let's not. <laughs> <laughs> because I said let's the go. other night they shouldn't have been on Capitol Hill. Then I found out they weren't actually on Capitol Hill, but they may have been. Their people were on Capitol but Hill. Let, let's, let's make this case here. The Catholic charity, Catholic hospitals receive, they receive federal money, federal subsidies. At the same time, they do with those federal subsidies in their hospitals, they, with Medicaid, Medicare, they take care of those patients. They do their religious activity with private money. They keep it separate. They're doing it right now. And yet, what the argument here is that the health care system couldn't keep those money separate. The CAPS compromise kept the money separate. Women could go into that exchange, be subsidized, but only their private money would cover abortion care. And that's the point here. The money was kept separate. There is no dollars, no federal dollars under the CAPS compromise used for abortion coverage. The problem with that is money is fungible, and in the case of, a, of, a, of an insurance policy, some policy that covered abortion uh, procedures and one that didn't cover it, you would say should cost the same. But they cost different because one would cover an additional procedure. So clearly, there's a subsidy involved. But, but there's a hypocrisy. Here. That. There's hypocrisy here. The hypocrisy here that why can the Catholic hospitals keep it separate, but a health care Nancy, could you can't. agree with me if I was right and you were wrong? You're <laughs> not allowed to, instead of Nayrod, to agree with me, are you? Well, hey, I, I think we're right here. I you know what H.L. Right Mencken once said? Never argue with somebody whose job depends on not being convinced. You are pro-choice. Fair enough. You're Peter, not pro-choice. Th this isn't a point for me to make this issue. You know, I, I, uh, let me. Just, but anyway, we're getting nowhere. Where's this going to end up? I think Are we going to get a health care bill this year? Yes, we will, and I think that um, more uh, calm demeanor in the Senate. The Is there a compromise know. yet to be reached that hasn't been reached yet? Or are I you think, saying it's I already think, behind us? Uh, no, no, no. I think that there will be a compromise. I mean, the good news is that everyone rhetorically says they just want to keep the status quo. So if you listen to the rhetoric, everyone actually agrees. The question is, can you operationalize that, given that government is going to get more involved in providing health care than it was before? Okay, speaking of health care, we're going to move on right now to another segment. When we come back, 